Hello. In this video, we are going to look at a classic random variable problem. The learning outcome for this video is thus just to learn how to be able to solve this particular problem, which involves calculating the probability that event X happens before event Y, if both of these events occur at random times. There are an enormous number of ways that this question can be asked as you can essentially use different random events in the setup of the question. In the past, I have used radioactive decays, chemical reactions, drugs in the human body, getting to the gate of an airpoint. Point is that whatever the contrived backstory is in the question, the solution to the problem is always the same. I would thus think about the various ways that this question could be constructed in the exam in order to make sure I fully understand the general argument. Regardless of the generality of the question, let's look at a particular instance of this problem that we are going to consider in this video. The question in this case runs as follows. Bob is waiting to catch a bus. Alice, meanwhile, is visiting the library before going to catch the bus from the same stop as Bob. What is the probability that Alice will meet Bob at the bus stop if we are allowed to assume that the time she spends in the library, capital T, is an exponentially distributed random variable with parameter A? The time Bob will have to wait for a bus, capital Y, is also an exponentially distributed random variable. Capital Y has parameter B. I think this question is rather unimaginative, as it doesn't say what happens to Bob and Alice after they meet at the bus stop. I like to think that they fall madly in love, get married, have children and finally die within a few days of each other after an extremely happy life. If you want to come up with a different story for Alice and Bob, you can do. The important thing to recognise, however, is that for Alice to meet Bob at the bus stop, she must arrive before the bus departs. If the bus arrives before Alice, then Bob and Alice never meet, and their life of domestic bliss disappears. The question provides us with some random variables that we can use to model this business of Alice and Bob and the bus stop. We are told that Alice arrives after an amount of time given by a random variable called t. Furthermore, we are told that the bus arrives after an amount of time given by a random variable called y. As the figures make clear, if t is less than y, then Alice meets Bob at the bus stop. If, by contrast, y is less than t, then they do not meet. After all this palaver, we thus find that the question is just asking us to calculate the probability that the random variable capital T is less than the random variable capital Y. This is what these questions are always asking. It may be dressed in different ways, but underlying the often quite contrived description in the question lurks this business of calculating the probability that one random variable is less than the other. Before I show you how to calculate this particular probability, let's first briefly review the exponentially distributed random variable. We need to do this as if you look at the question, you see that y and t are both exponentially distributed random variables. If you remember, in a previous video, we said that the exponentially distributed random variable could be used to model the time that it takes for something to happen. We said that the probability, cumulative probability distribution function for this type of random variable is given by this expression, that the probability that the random variable is greater, capital T is greater than T, is given by this expression, and that the probability density function for this type of random variable, which is just the derivative of the cumulative probability distribution function, 
is given by the expression shown here. With all that in place, let's now return to the question in hand, the business of Alice, Bob and the bus stop. We cannot use the result we have just derived revised immediately as calculating P is the probability that capital T is less than T is not simply a matter of inserting some particular T value into E is equal to minus lambda T. The problem is that T, Alice's arrival time, is itself random. We are saved, however, by remembering the partition theorem which we learned about in an earlier video. We can use the partition theorem and note that we can the set of all possible capital T values forms a partition of the sample space. We can thus calculate the probability that T capital T is less than capital Y by calculating the sum in inverted commas of the probability that capital T is equal to a particular value small t and that capital Y is greater than small t, the probability that both of these things are true at the same time. The inverted commas are necessary here, as strictly speaking, we cannot calculate a sum as we are dealing with continuous random variables. We thus have to calculate an integral instead, as shown here. Notice that the integrand in this expression is precisely the quantity that I stated we need to sum. This is the probability that capital T equals small t and that capital Y is greater than small t. The only thing is that I have written this out in terms of the product of a conditional probability and an absolute probability. In other words, I have taken advantage of the definition of conditional probability. The next important thing to note is that the question gives us no reason to believe that the random variables capital T and capital Y are correlated. Alice's movements will not affect those of the bus after all. This ensures that we can write, rewrite the conditional probability in the integral as an absolute probability. This is a rather useful realisation as we now find ourselves in a position where we know all the required probabilities. The probability that capital Y is greater than T, for example, is the probability that the event does not occur before time small t, which we have just seen is equal to e to the minus a t. If you look at the question, you see that it tells us that the parameter for the exponentially distributed random variable that describes is Alice's arrival time is A. Working out the probability that capital T is equal to T is slightly more involved. We need here the probability density function for the random variable capital T, which if you remember is equal to the derivative of the cumulative probability distribution function with respect to, in this case, small t. Now remember that the cumulative probability distribution function tells us the probability that capital T is less than or equal to small t. Obviously, we can work out this quantity by taking 1 minus the probability that capital T is greater than small t. The probability that capital T is greater than small t is just e to the minus bt, however, as the question tells us that the bus's arrival time is given by an exponentially distributed random variable with parameter b. We can thus calculate the required probability density by differentiating 1 minus e to the minus b to t with respect to small t. This is a rather straightforward piece of differentiation. The derivative in this case is equal to b times e to the minus b t. We can now insert all the probabilities that we know into the integral. Pleasingly, we find that the resulting definite integral is a rather straightforward one. We begin by exploiting the rules of the exponential and simplifying the integral to a single exponential function rather than a product of exponentials. We then take the constant factor outside the integral and integrate to get the function shown here in the brackets. 
When the upper limit of plus infinity is inserted into this function, we get 0, as e to the minus infinity is 0. e to the 0 is 1 by contrast, so the lower limit gives us b over a plus b, which is the answer to the problem. In this way, we, can, we thus conclude the problem. As I have stated throughout the video, the problem can be asked in a wide variety of different ways, as different random variables can be used for x and y. In the question we looked at in the video, the arrival of Alice is the random variable x, and the arrival of the bus is the random variable y. To ensure you understand, I would thus not recommend solving this self-same problem 20 times with different scenarios. Instead, see if you can devise a question with this structure. Think of two random events that happen at particular times and set an exam question that asks for the probability that one occurs before the other. If you can set a question on this stuff, then you will certainly be able to do the question that comes up. Thank you for your attention.